31, welcome to example two. I want to show you yet another property of logarithms. And then when we talk about, or when we, after we get through this property, I want to show you how it applies to solving an exponential equation like the one you have in example two. So if a whole bunch of things are positive, if m, n, and b are positive, so both arguments that we're ultimately going to see, if our arguments are positive and our base is positive and also not equal to one, then the following holds. If m is equal to n, so if you have an equation, if two things are equal to each other, right, you're allowed to take the log of both sides and maintain the equal sign. And we've seen that in a lot of examples. If two things are equal, if two expressions are equal to each other, as long as you do the same thing to both sides of the equation, whether you add a constant or multiply by a number, or in this case, log both sides, you get to hold on to the equal sign. So again, if two things are equal or two expressions are equal, you can log both sides of that equation and maintain equality. And you can choose the base you want, all right? So with that, let's take a look at example two. It says solve eight to the x equaling 21 and give the solution to the nearest thousandth. So taking a look at this, I have a power over here and specifically I have an exponential function because my variable is up in the exponent. And I get a little stuck because if I wanted to break these down into bases, the best you could do is you could say eight was two cubed, right? And you could say 21 was three times seven. So at best, at best you say two to the three X is equal to three times seven. But the problem is, even though we've broken this down into its prime factorization, the base on the left side of the equation is not the same as the base on the right side. So there's no way for me to set those exponents equal to each other. I can't use the techniques that I used in example one. It just, it doesn't work because these bases aren't the same. All right, so then what do we do? What's the workaround? Well, before we get to the workaround, let's get some gut feelings for what the solution might actually be in this case. So let's think about eight to the first power. Eight to the first power is eight right? Because I need 8 to the x to be equal to 21. Well, 8 squared is 64. All right, so let's think about this. If I know 8 to the x is 21, and I've got an 8 and a 64 here, well, 21 is much closer to 8 than it is to 64. So I have a feeling my x value is going to be closer to 1 than it is to two. So my guess, I'm just gonna guess here for my gut feelings, I'm gonna say x, I think it's somewhere around 1.3. All right, if I had to guess, because 21's a little bit far away from eight, but it's definitely not as far away from eight as it is from 64. So I'm gonna say about 1.3. All right, so we wanna solve for the exponent. We literally want the number that we need to tack on to base eight to get to 21. So here, I would say x is equal to log base eight of 21. Because keep in mind, a logarithm is an exponent. It's quite literally the exponent you need on eight to get to 21, right? So that's what x is equal to. But the problem is I don't have a log base eight button. Now some of you do. Some of you have those new fancy calculators and that's good for you, but I wanna show you how to do it when you don't have a calculator button like log base eight. Because again, my calculator only has common log and natural log, but I wanna keep this in mind. So I'm just gonna put a pin in this and I want you to just, we know this is the answer. Whatever this number is, that is our answer. But how can we get this on our calculator if we don't have a log base eight button? And even if you do, if you have the new fancy calculators and you have that button, Still follow along with me doing it my way because we will get into more complicated problems and you'll wanna have this technique under your belt. All right, so I'm gonna give you a couple ways to do this. The two buttons that I have on my calculator, if you'll remember, I have a common log button and a natural log button. So I have two log buttons built into my calculator. So I'll just approach this problem initially deciding that I wanna use the log button. And you can use either one. It's not gonna make much of a difference in the number of steps. It's just what button you wanna push. Okay, so with that, let me reposition my paper. There we go. All right, here we go. This property says if two things are equal, if m, which I'm gonna call eight to the x here, 
is equal to n, which I'm going to call 21, then I can log both sides of that equation and keep the equal sign. And I can choose any base I want. So I'm going to opt for common log. So if two things are equal, I can take the logarithm of both sides of this equation. All right. So 8 to the x was equal to 21. So log of the left side of the equation has to equal log of the right side of the equation. OK, great. Now, think back to 6.5. We talked about this. When you have the logarithm of a power here, right, 8 to the x, what are you allowed to do with the exponent? Or the, there was the power property in the last section, which said you can bring this exponent down in front of the logarithm as multiplication. All right. Now, these might look scary, but they're just numbers, log 8 and log 21. I could calculate them on my, on my calculator. And let me just give you a for instance. I want to give you a little side problem here. If I had said 8x was equal to 21, and I wanted to solve for x, I think you would have told me to divide by 8 on both sides, right? And you would have told me, hey, Miss say it's 21 eighths. OK, same principle applies here. This is just a number. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide both sides of this equation by log 8. These will cancel, right? And I will get x is equal to log of 21 over log of 8. And that's something that I can calculate because I have a common log button on my calculator. So let's try this. I'm going to do log of 21 divided by log of 8. And I'm looking at 1.464. And I think I was asked to go to the thousandths place, which is three decimals. So I need to go look one to the right of that. That is the number one, so I will not round up. So my answer is x is equal to 1.464. Okay. Now, I guessed 1.3. I'm a little bit off, but I'm not off by too much, so I'm happy with that. Okay. So with that... I want to show you how we could have solved this using the other calculator button. All right, we also have natural log. All right, so let's just make sure we're clear on this. If you see log of x, that's saying log base 10 of x. If you see natural log of x, that's log base e of x. And e was Euler's number. It was that number that was around 2.7128. All right. So let's start this problem over. I'm actually going to rewrite it here, 8 to the x equaling 21. What I could have done is I could have taken the natural log of both sides of this equation. All right, so let's say I went natural log of 8 to the x is equal to the natural log of 21. All right, so I'm choosing natural log this time out because I have that calculator button. Same rule applies. When you have the logarithm of a power, that exponent come down, can come down in front as multiplication. Right? And then I can divide by ln of 8 on both sides. Right? These are going to cancel, and I'm going to get x is equal to ln of 21 over ln of 8. And let's see what that calculator command gives me. So let's do ln of 21 divided by ln of 8. And you'll see I get the same answer. 1.464. And I just want to relate this back to the very last thing we talked about in section 6.5, which was the change of base formula. I had mentioned in the very last example of 6.5 that if you didn't have that log base 8 button, and again, the new, the new calculators have where you can put in the base that you want. But for my calculator and the older calculators, you only have common log and natural log. All right, so we learned in that very end example that if you have a base and you don't have a calculator button for it, you're allowed to rewrite this as the log of your argument in ratio to the log of your base. Or you could rewrite it as the natural log of your argument over the natural log of your base. And that's exactly what we saw popping out when we applied this property of logarithms. So we've got a bunch of ways to see this, but ultimately the answer to this problem is 1.464. All right, now before we leave this um, example behind, I do wanna point out, oops, let me get that in view. I wanna out, point out this note, all right? 
Oh, we could check using the intersection func intersect function on our graphing calculator. I'll show you that in just a little bit, but this note says, be careful when evaluating logarithms. I frequently get that students will tell me ln of 21 over ln of 8 is ln of 21 over 8. You're not allowed to combine logarithms that way. All right. If you'll recall from the last section, ln of 21 over 8 is ln of 21 minus ln of 8. Oops, I even wrote that here. Right? ln of 21 eighths is ln of 21 minus ln of 8. So I don't want you to think that you can take two logarithms that are in ratio to one another and make it the natural logarithm of the ratio of their arguments. Because when you have a natural log of a fraction, you have to use subtraction to subtract those exponents. All right, so let's check this on our calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and go to our y equals. I'm gonna clear out what I have in here. I'm gonna do eight to the x, and then I'm gonna set it equal to 21. So I'll put y1 is eight to the x, and I'll put y2 is 21. I'm gonna hit zoom six, and let's see what we got here. There's my exponential growth, and I can't even see my other function. I only see the exponential growth, and that's because if you think about our window, all right, let's look at our y max. Our y max is 10, but my second equation here was 21. So I'm gonna adjust my window. I'm gonna make this go, I'll have it go up to 30, and then I'll scale it by fives. You don't have to change the y scale. I just don't want 30 tick marks on my axis. I'll just have them make a tick mark every five units. As soon as you adjust your window, make sure you hit graph. All right, so we should see eight to the x, there we go. And then I should see 21 coming in there and they intersect right here. And if I had to guess, that intersection does look like it's one and a half. Now I know it's 1.464 because we calculated that number, but if I wanted to check it on my calculator, okay, it does look like one and a half. So I'm gonna hit second and trace. We're gonna go with option five. So you can either scroll down to five and hit enter or just hit the number five. And then because there's only the one intersection point, I just need to hit enter, enter, enter. So we'll go, I want the first curve to be eight to the X. I would like the second curve to be 21. And you can type in 1.5 as your guess, or you can just hit enter through guess. And there's my X coordinate of 1.464. All right, so you've got a bunch of ways that you can solve this example. I want us to get comfortable with applying this, oops, you can't see it anymore, that property of logarithms that we were talking about, this will come in handy that if two expressions are equal to each other, you can log both sides and keep the equal sign. You can either use common log or natural log. If you have the more advanced calculators, you can just calculate this number straight up, or you can plug it into your y equals and see where it intersects. All right, so with that, we're gonna try a more convoluted example of how to solve exponential equations when the bases are not the same. All right, I'll see you in a bit, bye.